When archaeologists uncover Viking Age structures, ships and tools, they repeatedly find timber that should have rotted away a thousand years ago, but somehow hasn't. Longhouses built in brutal North Atlantic climates, ship timbers buried in wet, oxygen-poor soil, fence posts that theoretically should have vanished centuries ago. Yet pieces survive, some still strong enough to handle. And that fact alone unsettles modern builders. We rely on chemicals, preservatives, heat treatments, kiln drying, and factory coatings. The Vikings relied on neither industry nor modern chemistry. And still, their wood outlived them by centuries. That forces one question to the surface. What did they know about wood that we don't? And what technique could take a material as vulnerable as timber and give it an almost immortal lifespan. This is not myth or saga embellishment. This is engineering, and it's rooted in one of the most misunderstood but effective preservation strategies ever used. Now let's move directly into the true foundation of the Viking wood trick. Because once you understand their method, it becomes clear why their timber endured storms, salt air, and time itself. At the centre of their approach was a deliberate decision to fight rot at the microbial level, not the surface level. The Vikings understood that fungi need oxygen, moisture, and warmth to break wood down. Removing just one of those conditions slows decay but removing two stops it almost entirely. Their solution was a process historians call controlled carbonization, often referred to as shu sugiban in later cultures, but practiced independently in the north long before it was named. Vikings lightly burned the surface of structural wood, then brushed and polished it until only a carbon-hardened shell remained. They weren't trying to char beams to charcoal. They were altering the outermost cell layers, locking them against moisture, and creating an environment fungi could not survive in. To understand why this worked, picture the structure of a fresh timber. It's full of microscopic tubes ready to wick water and oxygen into the core. When the Vikings scorched those tubes shut, they transformed the beam into something closer to ceramic on the exterior, while retaining strength and flexibility inside. The result was wood that didn't drink water. A burned surface doesn't just repel moisture, it also resists insects, UV damage, and the slow creep of mildew. This is why some Viking posts set into soil have survived so long. Fungi could not colonize the burned zone, and the treated wood never stayed wet long enough to decay. The second part of the Viking trick involved oil absorption, but not the kind people associate with decorative finishes. After charring, they often coated beams with animal fats, fish oils, or plant oils. The carbonized surface acted like a hardened sponge, drawing the oils deep into the grain. This further waterproofed the timber and gave it an internal barrier that no rain or seawater could penetrate. Today, when homesteaders coat wood with linseed oil or tongue oil, they are unknowingly repeating this principle. The Vikings, however, weren't polishing furniture. They were treating critical load-bearing beams, oars, hull planks, and fence posts. The combination of heat and oil didn't beautify the wood. It armoured it. Another overlooked component of their technique was selective burning. The Vikings never scorched entire beams uniformly. Instead, they targeted the parts most vulnerable to moisture. Fence posts were burned only in the sections that went underground. Ship timbers were burned on the exterior hull, not the interior where joinery needed precision. 
House posts were charred where they met the ground or where runoff travelled. This precision helped the treatment last far longer because only the exposed surfaces carried the hardened carbon layer, ensuring structural integrity remained untouched inside. This idea of localised protection is something anyone can apply today. If you're setting posts for a shed, burn only the bottom third. If you're building a raised bed, char only the side-facing soil and water flow. It extends lifespan dramatically without consuming unnecessary energy or time. The Vikings paired their heat and oil method with another equally important trick airflow design. They never built structures that trap moisture around treated wood. Longhouses, though warm, were incredibly well ventilated. Storage buildings had slatted walls that allowed winds to pass through. Even ships, when hauled onto land, were propped at angles that encouraged rapid drying. This deliberate combination of treatment and environmental design prevented moisture from lingering and that kept the burned surfaces functioning. Modern builders can mirror this simply by elevating wood off soil, allowing airflow under structures and avoiding tight enclosures around treated beams. Another example of the effectiveness of this method comes from Viking-era stave construction. Stave church builders in Norway, descendants of the same woodworking tradition, charred the bottoms of their great supporting posts before setting them on stone. Those posts lasted centuries in a climate defined by rain, snow and shifting temperatures. The lesson is direct carbonizing wood is not a cosmetic process. It is a structural preservation method that outperforms many modern sealants. Applying the Viking method today is straightforward. Start with dry wood. Use a controlled flame to darken the surface until it turns deep brown or black but does not crack. Brush off the loose soot, then apply a penetrating oil while the wood is still warm. Let it absorb and cure fully. Afterward, install the wood in a way that allows natural airflow and avoids soil contact unless burned and oiled. The result is timber that can outlast many store-bought treated boards, and it requires no chemical preservatives whatsoever. The brilliance of the Viking wood trick lies in its simplicity. Fire, oil and airflow, three elements they mastered long before modern science existed. And the structures, ships and tools that survive today stand as proof that their method wasn't theory. It was a technical solution that delivered longevity unmatched by most modern treatments. If you want more deep dives into historical engineering and the forgotten genius of our ancestors, subscribe to Echoes of Valor, share this video with fellow history enthusiasts, and help keep this knowledge alive.